now we're off to the doctor to talk to her about our situation. She's looking over the chart and saying that she wants to refer me out to a specialist. I felt as if there was kind of a battle. You know, you would say one thing and then she would kind of try to redirect you into, you know, a C-section. I don't have a doctor. Good morning. We had our maternity shoot yesterday. I thought it went really well. All the photos that she was showing us on the camera seemed really, really nice with the lighting she had in the studio. Hattie was a dream to work with. She was so encouraging and gave us some pose ideas. So I cannot wait to see all the photos. And we got some family shots, which rarely happened for us as a family of three before we become a family of four. I'm always left out of the photos. I know, but you looked so good. Anthony did a few push-ups before the shoot. <laughs> Gotta get me pumped. It was really fun. So that will be coming to YouTube too. So stay tuned for that, our whole maternity shoot, which very, very glad we did that. Now we're off to the doctor to talk to her about our situation and have our ultrasound. Also, I should get my glucose results back today from my three hour test. So I'm really hoping I passed. My friend Jenna went into labor last night. Her water broke early at 35 weeks and it's just really giving me a wake up call that we need to be really ready. So we need to make sure we have everything in place as far as just a hospital bag packed. We need to have food in my fridge. We just need to have a little bit the more car seat. car seat. We want to have content planned so I don't have to shoot while I bring her home. So we have a lot to work on the next few weeks, just in case. This is the first appointment Anthony can come into the doctor's office with me because he's fully vaccinated. I'm so happy about this. I'm about to get my ultrasound to see how the baby's head is measuring. But I'm pretty confident that no matter what, size her head is, I want to have a shot at doing a VBAC, so I just need to be, you know, honest with that. It's funny because I feel like we see her almost every other week, whether it's like a 3D ultrasound or coming into the doctor's office, but my mom and Brittany's mom only got to do one ultrasound. But also I paid for every time. Yeah, we kind of. Every time we come, we, I pay for the elective ultrasound. We want to so see her. It. It's worth it though because then it gives us that peace of mind. Yeah. So we wanted to update you guys on what has been going on. I'm currently eight months pregnant and I don't have a doctor. <laughs> if you haven't seen the other video we posted about the pregnancy update part one, that will explain a little bit to where we got to the point we're at now. I briefly said in that video that I don't want a C-section. So the reason why I don't want a C-section is because I already experienced one with Jaden and I had an elective C-section. I had a cyst on my ovary and at the time my doctor recommended that I go in, have the C-section and have the cyst removed on the same day. I also had the option to have a vaginal birth and then come in a few days later and get the cyst removed. Looking back now, I would have opted for a vaginal delivery and gone back for the cyst removal but I was 19. I didn't do a ton of my research. I just thought, you know, scheduling a C-section seems a little bit more convenient, so I went that route. And my experience with the C-section was that it was just such a longer recovery time. I mean, you have major surgery. Your stomach is swollen. It can't hold the baby right after. I had to go to recovery for an hour. I wasn't able to be with Jaden right away. Just having the staples in, and it was just a whole process that I didn't consider when I assumed I was gonna have a C-section. I thought it was be gonna be a little bit easier than having vaginal. So with this pregnancy, I talked to Anthony and I said I really really want to go for a VBAC which is vaginal birth after cesarean and it's something that I know is possible and I'm a really good candidate for it based on all my research. Again I'm not a doctor but I always do research from really high, highly reputable sources. So I knew it was something that I really wanted to consider with this baby. And I wanted to have the experience of being in the hospital, going into labor, having that experience with my husband this time around and not having to be in the recovery room after and the long recovery of the C-section afterwards. Why are people so, not against it, but like there's contemplation of having, you know, a normal birth after a C-section, what could, possibly happen. So to be a good candidate for a VBAC, you have to have a few things in place to even have the doctor consider you for that route. What type of incision did you have with, a v with your original C-section? Mine was really low. It's the kind that is preferred in a VBAC situation, but there are different types of emergency 
c-sections that have a longer cut that is makes you not a good candidate for a VBAP. Have I ever had a uterine rupture? No, I haven't. I've not had any surgery on my uterus either. So I was also a good candidate in that sense too. Like that is why there is some type of risk involved with having a, you know, a VBAC after having a C-section because that could rupture, right? Yeah, although a uterine rupture happens less than 1% of deliveries and it's a really rare, rare occasion. It's something to consider, but doctors really don't want to take that liability on. Because the baby and the mother could possibly die. Yeah, it's like a huge situation. So a lot of doctors don't even want to take on that liability risk. Most doctors won't even cons consider a VBAC if you had more than two cesareans. And I've only had one. Again, mine was 14 years ago. My scar is super low and it was an elective C-section. So it wasn't because I had failure to progress in the vaginal delivery, but it wasn't because I couldn't get the baby out naturally. So there was all these risks that we kind of had to weigh out if we were going to choose to do this. And I think because of you know, it was 14 years ago, and we really want to experience, you know, a natural birth. I natural think. in the sense that I'm still having an epidural, and I'm delivering in a hospital. Yeah, we're not doing it, like, in a, in a pool. Yeah, I'm not doing it at home, because with VBACs, they really recommend that you're at the hospital, you have an epidural. That way, if you have to go into emergency C-section, you're already prepped, and you have an anesthesiologist right there. With all my research, I also found that some doctors won't even let you have the option to do a VBAC, and you would need to find a doctor that is on board with you, and supports your decision if you're a good candidate. Granted, healthy baby, healthy mom, that's the main number one concern for my delivery. I want the baby to be healthy as possible, but I also really wanted a shot at having a VBAC and not just scheduling a C-section right away out of convenience. And in no way are we saying that C-sections are bad. No. Like it's just like another, you know, way to get the baby out, basically, if you have the option to yeah. do a VBAC. We definitely wanted to go in that route. So going into this pregnancy and being a lot more educated than I was at 19 having my daughter, I felt like I was very informed and I felt really empowered going into our first doctor's appointment. Don't get me wrong, I loved my doctor. She was been great for all my health and wellness checkups. When I first met with her, she looked at the calendar and wanted to schedule me a C-section without finding out anything about what I wanted for my birth. And I said, oh no, wait, no, I don't want to schedule a C-section right away. I want to look into having a VBAC. I've done my research. I know I'm a good candidate. Can you look over my chart and see what you think too? And she agreed that I was a good candidate. She was just telling me all the risk with a VBAC and that it is risky and it's something that you have to consider with uterine rupture and just being really aware of that, which I totally understand. And I was grateful that she was explaining that to me. And going forward from each appointment, each time I would meet with her, she said, good thing you're having a C-section, you know, because of you know, these points. And each time I would have to remind her, no, wait, I'm uh, going for a VBAC. Felt like I just had to constantly voice my opinion that I wanted a VBAC and there was really no reason why I shouldn't at least have the shot to try. And I expressed that to Anthony too. So, you know, I don't feel like I'm being heard and I feel like what I want is kind of being dismissed as far as like, no, we should just schedule the C-section. And I couldn't really get a feel for, you know, what the conversations were going on in the appointments because I wasn't allowed. I was able to do the ultrasounds, but I couldn't go in and actually talk to the doctor until recently when I got va vaccinated. Yeah, so each time I leave the appointment, I kind of felt like I was second guessing myself, like, wait, am I making the right decision? Like I constantly was just second guessing what I had originally felt in my heart that I really wanted to pursue. So after the appointment that you guys saw in part one of this update, that's when I was told that our baby's head is on the little bit of the bigger side. I took that time after, because I had two weeks in between my next appointment, and I did, again, tons of research. I talked to a well-respected doctor and also a top labor and delivery nurse at a top hospital in Southern California. They're both family friends and I just really wanted to get second opinions. And they both told me the same thing. Just because your baby's head is a little bit on the larger side doesn't mean that you can't deliver a healthy baby. It's actually more of a risk if your baby's head is small because then if the baby's head comes out first and the shoulders get stuck, it's actually like a really big risk to the baby and more potential of a C-section in that case. My mom and I have the same exact frame. She's also 5'10". She delivered my brother who's nine pounds. He had a little bit of a bigger head. I have a little bit of a bigger head because I can't fit into any hats. And I can't either. So <laughs> we have larger than normal heads, so. <laughs> but she was able to have four successful vaginal births. And I know everyone's different, but we do have the same frame. We carry the pregnancy, our frame is the same. In the meantime, I also got a referral from my friend for a really great doula she had during her birth and she 
came highly recommended. So I hired her. She's gonna be my support person while I'm in there. She's gonna help keep me stress-free. We're doing a lot of prep before to make sure that I have a really successful VBAC. And that's what doulas are. They just give you all the information to make sure you're very prepared so when you do get into the hospital, you kind of have the techniques. And like mm -hmm. before, it would be what well, you would go into classes, Lamaze classes, yeah. but that's more of a physical preparation. But I think the doula also is familiar with the hospital, knows the procedures, and is an advocate too. So when you get in, the doula will take kind of take care of everything. So going into this next appointment, I really felt confident that although our baby's head is a little bit on the larger side it's not something to schedule a c-section over and it's still not something that i was comfortable saying yeah i can't deliver naturally let's you know move in the c-section direction i was still very adamant about having a back. and i felt like we were on the same page too because he was able to go to my appointment this time and it just gave me another sense of confidence that we're on the same page and i just wanted to see how he read the situation too if i was going crazy or not I just want to be able to, if I had a C-section, at least I tried everything else and I felt good about, you know, I tried, I couldn't make it work, I, but I don't want to get into a situation where I had a C-section and realize I should have been an advocate for myself more. And because I didn't, I was pushed into a C-section without even having the shot. We go to our next appointment. We have our ultrasound again, the ultrasound tech says, oh, you know, your baby's head's a little bit. It's a wee. It's a little, little bit bigger, bigger, but she didn't seem too concerned. <laughs> Everything else was super healthy about her. Her measurements were great. She's supposed to be an eight pound baby. But there wasn't anything abnormal because, mm -mm. you know, if she had a larger head, they would think, okay, is there fluid building in the head? There's a lot of other complications that could go on, just not her having a bigger head, but everything looked normal mm -hmm. on the ultrasound. And because we did the genetic testing early on, we knew that she wasn't a high risk for any of these potential diseases that could cause fluid in the head. We go into the doctor's appointment and she's looking over the chart and saying that she wants to refer me out to a specialist who will be able to give me a better understanding of the head's larger if we need to schedule a c-section based on what the specialist says i was pretty frank with her and just said you know i really want a shot at doing a v-back it's hard to say 100 percent certainty that i want a c-section based on a little bit larger head like that wasn't something that i was going to be swayed with regardless of what a specialist said we are going to see a specialist but mm -hmm. through recommendation of someone else because we want to get that outside opinion from you know our doctor's network i felt as if there was kind of a battle <laughs> a little <laughs> bit like just you know you would say one thing and then she would kind of try to redirect you into you know a c-section and then almost not scare tactics but it was just a lot of like she was advocating for you like okay i hear you okay mm -hmm. let's go ahead and do this these are some techniques we can do or you know there wasn't just a solid game plan of what you wanted to do it, it just, just was like just wait till the specialist what the specialist says which, which made, made me think that yeah. the specialist was going to recommend a c-section and that's what i was being set up for so that's a safer route for them too because if a specialist approved you for a VBAC and something happened then that falls back on them. Right. After that appointment I wanted to get Anthony's feedback in the car and I just asked him did am I going crazy? Am I not being heard or do I feel like I'm just what I want is being a little suppressed and I just have to continue on. You felt the same way as me. Yeah, I just didn't really feel she was an advocate for what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And we felt confident that you do need to find a different doctor. Find, yeah, I had zero game plan at that point. I just knew that regardless, I wasn't gonna deliver with that doctor. So I knew that I need to have all my forms from my doctor. So basically my doctor's office was gonna know that I was leaving regardless and it's a little bit of an awkward situation you want to be on the same page with your doctor that's 100 percent number one you want to be feeling like your doctor has your back and they're looking out for your best interest not just the convenience of their schedule i've never experienced the doctor that i had with a vaginal regular delivery so it could be a totally different experience for another person who's with her but because of the v-back situation i just feel like she should have been really upfront with me and said i don't feel comfortable doing a v-back and then i would have known right from the week one that i needed to find a new doctor in the very beginning but i yeah. think because it went this far now it's like i need to make the decision now and i'm a lot further along i'm in my eighth month and at this point i don't have a doctor but we're currently doing research and we're on the right track all that to say i've learned a lot i don't have a doctor but we will keep you guys posted on what's happening next and if you haven't seen my reaction to finding out Brittany was pregnant make sure to click the video here and we'll see you guys next time bye